Hi, everybody! At the start of this year, I covered a video discussing the Trails in the Sky trilogy. In that video, I discussed if we'd be getting either remakes or ports of the games onto modern hardware. I'd heard through my sources that we would see a remake of the Sky games in the near future. Toshihiro Kondo, Falcom's president, has been upfront about wanting to remake those games someday along with a East 5 remake before he retires. Kondo has quite a few years ahead of him. The man's only 49 years old. The average retirement age in Japan is 60, so at minimum he has about 11 years remaining. Look at Nihon Falcom's release schedule. They release at minimum one game a year. So chances are, we will get these remade before Kondo-san retires. But anyways, as I said in my video from January 28th, we will get these games on modern hardware at minimum, the West included. This is because Kondo has literally made it his mission to make all of the Trails games accessible to those who want to play them. We also know from looking at information from Falcom shareholder meetings and reports that these remakes are in development. Now that Kondo has explicitly mentioned these projects in interviews, other YouTubers have started talking about this topic. And that's great to see, because I respect the hell out of all of these creators, especially Cyrus Bright. That man's in the trenches creating top-tier Trails content for us, and he deserves to be a way bigger creator than he is. But back in January, I was called delusional and a liar for pointing out the information I had. But as soon as the Kaseki Nut or David cover the same information I had later on, they're praised for talking about this information and I get treated like the fucking jobber of YouTube. And I have to say this. I'm tired of being nice! But I will always share my information with you guys when I have it. Even if that goes unappreciated. Because for me, it's not about ego. It's about doing what I can to get a franchise I love, which helped me through one of the darkest periods of my life into the hands of more people. But for all the haters who call me a delusional liar, I have a message for you. SHUT YOUR DAMN MOUTH! With that out of the way, let's get into what we all really want to talk about. What this means for the future of the Trails franchise because that future is certainly as bright as Estelle's personality. Tell me when I'm telling lies! Previously, if you wanted to play the franchise in full, you were basically forced to be a PC master race crowd or play them through a mix of PC and console. This made a franchise that was already hard as hell to get into all the harder. This was what was partially keeping the franchise niche as hell. There were other reasons, of course, but this was the primary contributing factor. Another factor was because we only had two of the arcs and not in the intended order. We had the Sky Trilogy, but if you were on PSP you only had the ability to play two-thirds of it unless you were willing to jump through hoops. And then the Cold Steel games. Now you can play the Cold Steel games without having played the Sky Trilogy or the Crossbell duology of games. This is actually how I got my start in the franchise. I'm probably the biggest Trails fan you're ever going to meet. And guess what? I will literally tell any newcomer to the franchise to start with the goddamn game that interests them, so long as it's the first game in an arc. Trails is like an anime, you can jump in at the start of an arc and generally be fine. You don't need to know all of the minutia of the fucking series to enjoy it. Is it better if you start with the Sky games? Yes. But guess what? They're old, they're antiquated, and they are sure as hell going to annoy a lot of people who aren't steeped in old-school Japanese role-playing games. Don't mistake me though, I love those games too. But they're more of the skeleton of this franchise. They appeal to the sensibilities of 20 years ago. They aged well for the most part. But they're bare-bones and slow-paced. I'll cover in more detail in an upcoming video where to start the Trails franchise post-daybreak. So hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss that video when it drops. Another barrier of entry has been the graphics. I recently had someone comment on a video I did about the graphics for Trails Through Daybreak, and they even said Daybreak looks like dog water, completely missing the point of that video. The title of that video is Kuro no Kiseki does not look like a PS3 game. Now have Falcom games ever been lookers? Hell no. They've never been about the graphics. 
Goto pop up a side-by-side -side comparison of Daybreak against an actual PS3 game. Now you tell me, does Daybreak look like a PS3 game? No, it really doesn't. It looks like a mid-era PS4 title. If you think that's what a PS3 game looks like, you need your goddamn eyes examined. Tell me when I'm telling lies! At one point in time, Trails in the Sky was considered an exceptionally ugly game because of its 2D graphics. However, thanks to the resurgence of HD 2D graphics, more and more gamers actually want games that have nice sprite work than the hyper-realistic looking games AAA companies keep ramming down our throats. Tell me when I'm telling lies! Games like Trails in the Sky always age better graphically than those games too. I've said it once, and I'll keep on saying it. Stylized graphics are always superior to hyper-realistic ones, so a straight-up port would probably sell like gangbusters. Not only that, but I know a lot of JRPG fans refuse to jump into these games just because they can't play them all on their preferred platform. So right now, a port would work out super well for Falcom as a whole. Though there are some potential hurdles to overcome regarding that, so let's cover that a little bit. For those of you who don't know, Trails in the Sky as a whole was localized by XE Games. They published the majority of Falcom's releases until E8, the Lacrimosa of Donna, at which point NIS America took over. So if the Sky games were to get re-released, that is a potential problem for fans in the West. Now if these games are so old, maybe it'll be easier for NIS America to acquire the rights of the localization. Or there may be a handshake deal in place with Exceed to just re-release these games on modern consoles when this port is released. At minimum, I think we will see these released in the West. Just because Falcom is no longer in the position they once were when they were working with Xseed. At the time, both companies were smaller than they are today. Falcom is still a small company, in Japan they're certainly a household name. But here in the West, if you bring up Nihon Falcom, most people will look at you like you're speaking gibberish. Gamers on the other hand might know of them, but may not have played any of their games before. But among JRPG enthusiasts like myself, or the majority of the people watching this video, they will know of the franchise. It might not seem like Falcom are in the driver's seat, but they now have leverage over Xseed they didn't have before. They now work with a publishing company that's much larger than Xseed is, and NISA are actually willing to spend a bit of money on marketing Falcom's games. Is it the biggest budget that will get these games in front of people like whatever the latest release from Square Enix is? No. But that isn't Falcom or NIS America's target audience. They're targeting more hardcore fans of Japanese role-playing games, which is the right move. You don't have to target the normies to be successful. But what does this all mean for the Trails fandom? I think it means this series of games is about to be a whole lot less niche and is going to explode in terms of popularity, because the barriers of entry are becoming smaller. The only main one left is the one that's baked into this franchise, but I'd say that's by design. As I said previously in the video, yes, you can hop into these games at the start of an arc, though there might be points where you'll be a little bit confused which is why it's a good idea once you're on the ride to go back and play the older entries. Also, even if we only get the ports of the Sky Trilogy for now, I do think we'll see the game remade in full before Kondo retires, probably in time for the 30th anniversary of the franchise in 10 years' time, by which point I imagine Falcom will have the engine powering their current crop of games absolutely singing or they may have developed their own HD 2D engine to power more niche projects. Basically, ones where they're trying to faithfully recreate their older games for a modern audience. Thanks go out to my current channel members, R. Campbell and Danny Boy. If you'd like to get early access to some videos, exclusive content, and shoutouts at the end of every video, you can do so by hitting the join button or the link in the description. If you want to see more of my Trails content, then hit one of the two videos on screen now, and until next time, keep blazing that trail.